uh, but I've just cottoned on to what you're talking about. Uh, right, let's move on, shall we? The Labour Party in Wales wants to enrol child migrants to a scheme that would help them receive £1,600 a month once they turn 18. Uh, this is quite similar, by the way, to the, the scheme that's already operating in Wales, where children that are in the care system, they already receive a uh, basic income once they get to the age of 18. So this would be a potential extension of that scheme. That's all. You are uh, the editor of Labour on Cut. Mm -hmm. I therefore imagine that you would wholeheartedly back this proposal. Am I right? You're right. That's why? unequivocally good. Two reasons. Compassion and practicality. Compassion. It's actually including children who have, co have come to this country unaccompanied, mm -hmm. who are in the care system in Wales, so as part of that existing scheme. And the, the reason for the scheme is that when they turn 18, they're leaving the care system. They haven't got mum or dad. They haven't got uncles, aunts or a family network. And rather than having to go to claim job seekers allowance or income support or all the different benefits, they get this universal, their single oh, housing benefit, they get this single, simple um, income. And it's, for, it's time limited for two years. And to, to, uh, as, as a point of compassion, as you're leaving the care system and helping that transition into adulthood, it makes sense to, 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 try, to try support young people. From a practical perspective, though, it's also a good idea because that's when people are very vulnerable to criminality, to being targeted by all sorts of, uh, 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 all sorts of bad, bad sorts, and to help people make that transition. That, you know, whether it's for migrants or indeed for, just general, for, uh, for care leavers, that can only be a good thing because it's the state that would have to pick up the tab for, uh, if people get in, uh, are dragged into criminality or being exploited. I've got a couple of questions for you, but before I do, I suspect mm. that uh, you might have a different view, David, your thoughts. Yeah, th this, this is a scheme that shouldn't happen. I mean, it's all very well to talk about compassion, but the thing is, a lot of people who are classified as unaccompanied migrants are 16 or 17-year-old boys who are coming over, they know what they're doing, they're planning to come over to anchor themselves in the country, they come just before they're 18, and then when they get to 18, then they can claim the benefits and play the system. So the thing is, what this is doing is completely playing into the hands of criminal gangs and people who are working the system because they know and they're getting advised from people in groups like Care for Calais, do this, do this, do this, come to this place, come to this place, claim this, claim that. And they know what they can do and they're getting rewarded for coming over and they're not genuine asylum seekers. There are lots of people who are playing the system and I don't think we should give giving them a lot of money. No, if I can just finish. There was a lot of people, yeah, I'll just, just a couple of seconds. There's a lot of people who are playing the system. They're doing this. They know they're getting rewarded. And this is just another reward for people who are playing the system. So two points. One, the facts don't bear that out. 85% of people who come here um, and claim asylum have refugee status uh, awarded. So the vast majority are genuine. Point two, this is, the people we're talking about here are children. You can say they're 16 year old, you can say they're 15 year old. They are children. How do you ask they are their minors. Age? Um, that is the, at the point when they come and claim asylum. That's what that's So a 25 year old could turn up and say that I'm uh, 17 and a half. A 45 year old could come and say that, and it is down to the judgment of the, of the Home Office to make that, to make, to make that call. Frankly, the num you know, to, to say to, for, a, for an adult to claim to be a child, that can happen. This but happens gonna, a lot. It can happen, but I'm going to contend that that, can, that happens in the minority of cases. This scheme is targeted at children. And one of the kind of key points here is that we, the, we are actually only discussing this scheme. There's only going to be a number of... The only reason it's been extended in this way, the only reason there's going to be a level, uh, a number of um, uh, uh, migrants involved is that we have these huge backlogs in our asylum system. We have 132,000 outstanding decisions. It takes 20 months before an initial decision. Ten years ago, it was four months. If we had shorter decision times, then either the children would, be, would have leave to remain and they'd be in the scheme just the same way as, other, as their peers are, as, as, as the kids born here, or they'd have had, had their status revoked and then they would be, have to be moved out of the country. The, the driver here, the real issue is that whacking great backlog, which has just grown and grown and grown. Yes, but the backlog is so big because the volume coming is so great. We're at 5,000 uh, this year already. So isn't there a part of you that's slightly concerned that actually if what you then start doing is increasing um, funds available, that actually 
it's going to be counterproductive because by your own logic, the backlogs are huge already. If you start incentivizing, I mean, no one should want to incentivize learned children to cross channels. Um, aren't you worried that you might have well, a counterproductive two, outcome? Two things there. One, um, the incentive for a lone child to cross the channel, it's not about whether someone gets benefits here. It's about the scale of terror. From what where in France? Well, from where they're, from where they're, where they're is, coming from. Which is France? Um, well, whether, however they're getting here... It's... No, but they're coming from France, though, aren't they? So the scale mm. of terror that they're so subjected not... to in France is pretty much non-existent. Uh, uh, no, because people don't come exclusively via small boats. They come, people claim asylum coming into this country from multiple routes. And it's a, it's a myth that, to say that the majority of asylum seekers are coming just across the channel from, uh, from, from France. Some are coming from Belgium, yeah. But, and, and then in terms of the, 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 that, that backlog... It's not, the, if we can get that, that backlog down, if we can return to a situation that used to be um, 10 years ago where claims are processed, then this whole situation becomes much, much easier to manage. Yes, numbers coming have, have risen, but the numbers coming to the UK are a fraction of, what, of those that come to other countries. 191,000 came to Germany. Fra they've got yeah, a backlog, which is a fraction. We don't live in Germany, we live in the UK. But so. a fraction of the backlog, it's about the state's ability to do basic functions like well, process claims. Well, Germany, Germany can't cope either. It's, it's way too many. They, they've got the same situation as us. There's a lot of pull factors. There's a lot of reward if you get to Germany, just like there is if you come to the UK. Sweden's another country. In Norway, they're target countries for people who come, who want to come through a lot of safe countries like uh, Croatia, Italy, and then France, or Croatia, Austria, Germany, Belgium, and then France, to get the benefits that they get here. This is just going to increase the pull factor, and it's going to make the, the backlog larger, like Michelle said. So we need to not go down this scheme. What, what undercuts what you're saying is, again, that basic fact, 85% of people have... Um, uh, uh, that, that's, too, that, that's too many, to be and honest. That, I mean, that, but, but, there's a that, lot of people but, who are granted asylum who shouldn't be granted but asylum. That is, but that's judged by the Home Office, which is hardly... The most compassionate, or a department, or a department which well, has clearly a, is. If well, they give eighty uh, percent, if they give eighty-five well, percent, clearly they well, are. Here, but here, they're giving well, asylum to a lot of people who shouldn't Perhaps have it because they deserve asylum because they're fleeing places like Yemen, Iran. Syria. These yeah. are places with 98% um, uh, Well, look, Loads of people are coming from Albania and they're coming from other safe countries as well and uh, coming well, through France this... and, uh, you know, they're getting... Oh, Albania's a, a, Albania is a, 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 a really good, ex Albania is a really good example. Because we have a returns policy um, uh, with, uh, with Albania, like we used to have with the EU, the numbers from Albania have been, have been brought down because people who are not going to be granted, um, who, who don't have um, their status approved, are being moved back. There's we used to have that with the EU. We over. don't have that with the EU. If we had things like that, if we had legal routes into this country, the pressure, immediate pressure at, at entry points into the UK... There are legal would be routes from Afghanistan and Ukraine. We're taking a lot of people from those countries. Right. And same, but, but, yeah. This conversation, everyone, will rumble on and on. Where do you stand at it, on it uh, at home? And also, that I think there's been talk of a potential national emergency um, being declared. Would you be in favour of that? What would it mean? And what would it even impact, anyway, your thoughts, getting them into me, all the usual ways? Uh, when I come back in a couple of minutes, I want some of your thoughts. But also, I'm asking you, are you prepared for the national emergency alert that's going to be going off on your phones this weekend? Uh, do you think, yes, thank you, Rishi Sunak, helping to keep me safe? Or do you think, will you lot pack it in? Um, stop it trying to push us into a state of fear. What well, says you? I'll see you in two.